we will now discuss of the macromolecule that is proteins. We have seen amino acids and how amino acids join by formation of peptide bond. Protein word or this term was given by Mulder and that was on the basis of the suggestion which was given by Berzelius. So when we talk about who gave the term, we normally get two names and the important one is Berzelius. He was the one who suggested this name to the molecules which Mulder was observing. So it was by Berzelius for molecules studied by Mulder. So that is why Berzelius' name comes first because it was his idea that because these biomolecules are so important for life and that is why protein which means of prime importance word or term should be given. These proteins are also termed as polypeptides. Now polypeptide word is derived from two words. Poly means many and peptide is for peptide bonds. So it is a large molecule, more uh, molecular weight is more and it is made up of many, many amino acids. Now these polypeptides, big polypeptides are proteins. If a protein is made up of only one polypeptide, then it is known as mono meric protein. Monomeric pro proteins we know is a big uh, chain which can have one to many polypeptide chains. So if it is made up of only one protein or oh, sorry only one polypeptide then we will call it monomeric. Only one polypeptide. Example of a monomeric protein is Lysozyme, the bactericidal enzyme which is found in saliva, tears, etc. And another example is myoglobin, the globin part, the protein part which is present in this myoglobin pigment. These are monomeric proteins. If a protein is made up of many polypeptide chains, then we will call it multimeric. Multimeric protein. It is made up of many polypeptide chains. For example, if we talk of hemoglobin, in hemoglobin, the globin part, the protein part has two alpha chains and two beta chains. That means it is made up of four polypeptide chains and that is why it is a multimeric protein. Another example is insulin. Insulin is made up of two chains. One A chain or alpha chain and the other is B chain, B chain or beta chain. That means it is made up of two polypeptide chains. We are talking of the active functional insulin. Pro-insulin which is formed has three chains, A, B and C. So, the idea is how many polypeptide chains make up that protein. If it is only one, we call it monomeric and if it is more, then we call them multimeric. This is one way of classifying proteins. One more important and interesting thing is there are certain proteins which are called first class proteins. And they are also known as complete proteins. First class proteins or complete proteins are the ones which have all essential and non-essential amino acids. So if a protein has all, then that protein would be considered as first class proteins or complete protein. Here, example, the animal proteins like what we get from meat, fish and all, that those are complete proteins. So we write it as animal proteins 
are complete proteins. What would be second class protein now? Second class proteins or termed as incomplete proteins are the ones which would lack some amino acids. So they lack some amino acids. Those could be essential, non-essential and that is obtained from all plants. So plant protein or vegetable proteins are second class proteins. The veg proteins or plant proteins. And that is why when we are vegetarians, we have to combine various types of protein sources so that our requirement of all amino acids is fulfilled. Whereas those who take non-vegetarian or animal protein, even by taking one type of uh, product, they are getting all types of essential and non-essential amino acids. So this is how we classify proteins. One, how many polypeptides they are made up of and uh, what type of and how many amino acids they have in their structure. Now, we will talk about the protein formation. That is how the primary structure is formed, then how primary changes into secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures. We will now classify proteins on the basis of structure. The first or the simplest structure which is formed by formation of peptide bonds is primary structure. So what exactly is there in this primary structure? Amino acids are joined by formation of peptide bonds. So this is a just long linear chain of amino acids. The bond which is formed here is a peptide bond. So, by primary structure, what we mean is, this is the first protein structure which is formed and it is linear, only peptide bond. So, the bonds which are responsible for formation of primary structure are only peptide bonds. Another important thing about this primary proteins, they are normally non-functional. They, that means they do not perform any function. It's just the first stage where the protein is formed. When we talk of protein synthesis, the uh, in on the ribosomes, when the protein are synthesized, this is the structure which is formed. And then this structure undergoes various changes to actually become structural or functional protein. But here is an exception. The exception is, Insulin. Insulin is a primary protein but is specifically functional. Insulin is primary but specifically functional. Otherwise, all other primary proteins are non-functional proteins. Now let us come to the second stage. The second structure which is formed or after this that is known as secondary protein. Now this secondary protein is formed due to formation of hydrogen bonds. Suppose this is a long chain of amino acids and two amino acids, they make hydrogen bonds with each other. Now when they make hydrogen bonds, they come closer. So there are two possibilities. Say this is a primary structure and these dots which I'm making, these are amino acids. So if the amino acid here and here, they make hydrogen bonds. So because of this hydrogen bond, these two amino acids have come closer. And because of that, there is a 3D structure which is formed. So let me use another color for hydrogen bond. Say here is hydrogen bond, here is hydrogen bond. So what structure is formed is a helical structure. This is known as alpha helix. And the bonds which are responsible, one, peptide bond has to be there. So, peptide bond and the second is hydrogen bonds. 
these two bonds are responsible for formation of the secondary structure. Here, hydrogen bonds are formed between amino acids of the same chain. But if, say we make one chain, these are amino acids which are represented by dots here. This is another polypeptide chain. And now the hydrogen bonds are formed between two amino acids of two chains. Then also the two chains are going to stay together. This type of structure is known as beta pleated beta pleated structure but the difference is here hydrogen bond is formed between amino acids of the same chain whereas here it is between the amino acids of different chains example alpha helix is found in keratin keratin which is found in hair nails horns etc and beta pleated structure is found in silk fiber so these are secondary structure and the bonds which are responsible for secondary structure are peptide and hydrogen bonds. Now let us come to the third structure. The third structure is known as tertiary proteins. Tertiary proteins or tertiary structure. In tertiary structure, three chains, three polypeptide chains, they come closer. So let me make these chains. Say this is one helix of polypeptide. This is the second one and this is the third one. So there are three chains which are together. Now because of this complicated structure, what has happened is here is an amino acid, here is an amino acid, here also, here also. Those amino acids which come closer to each other, they have their functional group. For example, this amino acid, say we have OH, or it has OH here. We can take any example. This amino acid here has its amino group. So, the substance which can come and bind here, the substance which can attach to this, should be able to make bond with OH and bond with NH2. That means, this is a specific site to which a specific substance can attach. That means tertiary structure has become specifically functional. Keratin is structural protein. Silk fiber, structural protein. Here, they have become functional. Not only functional, they are specifically functional. Let us take one more example. Say here is a keto group. And here is carboxyl. So which molecule can come and bind here? The one which can make a bond with both the functional groups. So is this site not specific? That means tertiary proteins are specific or specifically functional. And what should we call these areas? These areas, that means where these special sites are present, they are called active sites. So, tertiary proteins, they are specific because they have active sites. And because of active sites, only a specific substance or a substrate can come and bind here. The same thing is seen in case of enzymes. We know protein digesting enzymes. Why do they bind only with protein? Why not carbohydrates or lipids? Because they can make bonds with only proteins or otherwise. Protein is able to make bonds with them. That means those enzymes have become specific. So example of tertiary proteins, enzymes. Enzymes are tertiary proteins. The fourth structure is even more complicated. They are known as quaternary proteins. Quaternary proteins. In quaternary proteins, as the name tells us, there are four polypeptide chains. So we can have one, two, three and four chains. The example, and these are also going to be specifically functional. The example here is hemoglobin, the global part of hemoglobin. Let us write it like this. The globin or hemoglobin. It has four polypeptide chains. 
this has two alpha chains and two beta chains. That means there are four chains which have joined together. These are also specifically functional. And that is why it can bind only to certain gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide or to some extent to even carbon monoxide. Now the bonds which are responsible. In case of primary structure, it is only peptide bond which is responsible for the formation. Secondary structure, peptide and hydrogen bonds. For tertiary, the bonds which are required, one peptide bond, second hydrogen bond, third ionic bond, ionic bond and fourth sulfide bonds or disulfide bonds. But for formation of disulfide bond, the condition is this bond can be formed between only sulfur, sulfur containing amino acids. So if there are two sulfur containing amino acid, then this disulfide bond would be formed. So these four bonds are required for formation of tertiary. Quaternary, again same, peptide bond. This is for quaternary. Peptide, hydrogen bond, ionic bond and disulfide bond. All these required for formation of tertiary and quaternary structure. So this is the classification of proteins on the basis of the structure. Primary, simplest structure, only peptide bond, linear. But between amino acids, a bond formation takes place, which is hydrogen bond. We get a 3D structure and we start calling it secondary protein. It can be helical or it can be pleated also. Tertiary structure with three such alpha helices, they coil to form active sites, then they become specifically functional like enzymes. And if they are quaternary, like four polypeptide chains are making a complex structure, then it is quaternary protein like in case of hemoglobin. Now in the next part, we will see various functions of